Prime Minister Narendra Modi today said financial inclusion is at the core of government's focus and the centre is working for the empowerment of people, especially those belonging to backward classes. Speaking at a national conference of scheduled caste and scheduled tribe entrepreneurs in New Delhi, Prime Minister said government wants to create job creators, not job seekers. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley said that National Investment and Infrastructure Fund to be used for infrastructure development in commercially viable projects. Jaitley said several sovereign and pension funds have expressed interest in NIIF and are willing to participate. Information and Broadcasting Minister Arun Jaitley today said that the growth of print media is a favourable factor for democratic functioning of the country. He said this while releasing the 59th annual report on print media compiled by Registrar of Newspapers for India. The Supreme Court today upheld the Kerala government's liquor policy that confined issuance of bar licenses to five-star hotels, rejecting a batch of pleas by bar owners and bar employees. The state government's decision was a part of its policy to make Kerala a liquor-free state by 2023. MTNL announces nationwide free roaming from 1st of January 2016. With this, the public sector telecom company catering to the two metropolises of Mumbai and Delhi will provide free incoming roaming services to its subscribers across the country. Communication and IT Minister Ravi Shankar Prasad made this announcement at a press conference in New Delhi. Loka Yukta police today raided the premises of former minister and mining baron Janardhan Reddy in Ballari in Karnataka for alleged illegal mining and possession of disproportionate assets. A Loka Yukta official said that a 42-member team of sleuths from the anti-graft watchdog was involved in the operation. Former Solicitor General Gopal Subramaniam, who is heading the Commission of Inquiry probing the alleged irregularities in DDC affairs, has written to National Security Advisor Ajit Doval, seeking names of competent officers to become part of the investigation. The noted lawyer said that his request to Doval is part of inquiry procedure, which calls for appropriate logistical infrastructure before beginning the probe. Lashing out at Aam Admi Party government over corruption charges, Chandni Chowk MP and Union Minister for Science and Technology, Harshwardhan said that in the last one year, the achievement of Delhi government is that it has been protecting its corrupt officials and MLAs and instead of taking steps for good governance, it has done everything simply to remain in news. Heavy rain today lashed Ramanathapuram district of Tamil Nadu as northeast monsoon continues to be active. Isolated rain has been forecast today in south coastal districts of Tamil Nadu, including Ramanathapuram, Kanyakumari, and Thutukudi. The Met Office has said that trough of low pressure continues to be in southwest Bay of Bengal adjoining Lanka. Assam BJP files FIR against seven Congress leaders for allegedly attacking party workers during a protest in Guwahati. BJP workers and supporters were attacked in front of the state Congress office in Guwahati when they were protesting against Congress leader Neil Mani Sendhika's derogatory comments against prominent BJP leaders. Indra Prastha Gas Limited has started issuing its stickers to CNG certified cars from today. Delhi government has given exemption to CNG run cars having IGS stickers from odd even scheme that begins from 1st of January. CNG stickers are being placed on the windscreens of a car so that it is easily visible. Crude oil prices hit 11-year low. Saudi Arabia announces more than 40% hike in domestic petroleum prices as its budget deficit touches record high of $87 billion. Crude oil fell more than 3% with global benchmark Brent crude oil hovering at 11-year lows as last week's short covering dried up. Saudi Arabia, the world's biggest crude exporter, continues to cut its dependence on oil revenue. India emphasized to Iran the need for early completion of all necessary procedures for its participation in the 5 billion US dollar Farzad B gas field. External Affairs Minister Shushma Suraj and Iranian Minister for Economic Affairs and Finance co-chaired the Joint Commission meeting also reviewed the progress in trade and economic cooperation and a number of related matters. Guinea was declared free of Ebola today after more than 2,500 people died from the virus in the West African nation, leaving Liberia as the only country still awaiting a countdown for the end of the epidemic. The epidemic began in Guinea in March 2014 and went on to spread to five other countries, killing at least 11,000 people. All-rounder Michel Marsh claimed four wickets as Australia defeated a defiant West Indies to claim a 177-run win on Tuesday in the second test to retain the Frank Worrell Trophy. Captain Jason Holder and Dinesh Ramdin both scored half-centuries and shared an aggressive 100-run partnership to highlight a gritty batting performance for the West Indies after Australia declared on its overnight score of 179 for three.